Well, hello and welcome to this really super short video. I am absolutely delighted to have Anne Pepper, who is one of our ATCL students in the course. Uh, my name is Sharon Mark Teggart, and along with Dr. Sally Cathcart, I am the co founder and director of the Curious Piano Teachers. And it is wonderful to have you on the call today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm very well, thanks. Great. So listen, we're on the call today. We're just going to give everyone a little snapshot of how you've been finding the course so far. Uh, so first of all, can you tell me a little bit of background just about yourself? Where are you from? Yes, I'm based in Ashbourne in Derbyshire. Um, I have been, I've probably been teaching, oh my goodness, for about 30 years. Um, well, 30 years ago, probably when I had my first student, I've been doing it as my main job probably for about 23 years. Wow. Um, and how, about, how did you find out about Curious Piano Teachers? How long have you known that we existed? Um, I think I've been a member now for um, just over a year, probably about uh, 15, 16 months. I think I, I think I initially saw an advert for it on Facebook and thought that looked interesting. And I looked a few times and then looked a few times again and then thought, actually, there's some really, really interesting things here. I think um, part of being a piano teacher is you, you are quite isolated. So I kind of liked the idea of, um, kind of sharing resources and ideas with other teachers um, and I think I'd been because I've been teaching for quite a long time I had I was at the stage where I was had been doing things the same way for a long time so I was looking for some new ideas some fresh ideas and um, of how to approach things and that was my one of my main reasons for um, joining the Curious Piano Teachers. Wonderful and um... What was it about the course this time last year that made you go, yes, I am going to do this online piano teaching diploma course? What was that thing that just kind of like pushed you over to the edge and you submitted your application? I think since joining the Curious Piano Teachers, I think I became more and more aware of there was a lot of areas that I wasn't confident in. I felt like I knew bits about a lot of different subjects, but not a thorough knowledge, certainly in certain areas. Um, and it's something I'd wanted to do a long time ago. And for one reason or another, life got in the way and my studio or business got quite busy and that was, it was, it was going very well. And I never got around to doing it. I think it was always stuck in the back of my mind thinking, I really, really wish I had done that. And the longer I left it, the harder it was to take that step, certainly to do it on my own and think, oh, I don't know if I can do that now. So I liked the idea that um, it was um, a guided course that I could have feedback, I would know I was on the right track and that I would be learning alongside other teachers as well. I, I liked that idea um, that there would be other teachers doing the course and, and um, we could bounce ideas off each other. So I think that was that was what pushed me to think, actually, no, now's the time, now's the opportunity when somebody can support me to do this and, and point me in the right direction and tell me that I'm doing the right sort of thing or going in the right direction. Yeah, was, yeah. That was my main it. decision, yeah. And actually just kind of hopping right onto the back of that. So you are now... On, you've been on the course, it's now the end of July, you've been on the course from September last year. How has it been? So yes. just even if we pick up on that kind of point, first of all, where you were saying everything felt that you kind of had a general knowledge, but you really wanted everything to go deeper. So how, how has that been impacting, you know, in terms of what you've been learning in practice in your teaching? Tell me about that. Oh, it's, it's been it's been a huge change. I think I think the main thing is that the, the further you dig into something, the further you delve into something, the more you have a solid sense of that particular concept. And then that gives you the confidence then to teach that in, in a variety of different ways. And I think not only um, researching a, a particular concept or an area uh, of, um, of piano teaching, but then... Um, learning about different ways of approaching that and different ways from coming at it to, to present to your students so, so yes it's really turned my teaching round and I think that whole self-reflection of actually learning a lot about myself 
you know, to actually analyze about your own experience and how you come to teach the way that you do. That was that was a fascinating journey, a really, a really good starting point to say, okay, this is where I'm at. Where do I want to go next? And are you getting a few answers in terms of where you do want to go next? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see, what, see what happens when I get to the end of this course. <laughs> <laughs> one step at a time Sharon <laughs> absolutely as we say at the curious piano teachers how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time one bite at a time <laughs> well, I do think that it is something that even I remember when I was at, back in in the days in my early days of, of doing courses like this and it was literally I remember one tutor saying to me you don't you Sharon don't try and do everything at once just fit in something and then come back to it. And I know that other people in the course have also said, you know, this idea of, you know, it's, there's so much and they're going, it's just lovely to know that the course is always going to be there because you always get access to the materials on an ongoing basis. Mm. And it's this idea of being able to come back and kind of go deeper because we can only really focus on a couple of things at a time. And of course it's quite fast paced. So, um, tell me a little bit just about how you've been able to fit it into your everyday life. How does that work for you? I, I think I think it varies. I mean, there are there are times when you think, "Yep, yeah, I've got this sorted. I'm all right. I'm on track." And other times where you just feel like, "Oh my goodness, there's so much to do." I think for anybody I'm embarking on the course, I certainly know for me, um, looking at the syllabus and looking at what. what you guys said was required for spending time. I thought, yeah, that's doable. I think you really have to be careful that you actually diarize and factor that into your timetable on a weekly basis because it's very easy for that to be the first thing that gets pushed to one side and you think I will do that later to, to keep on top of things. Um, I think there's, I think probably the, the um, most challenging time is when we were um, when we were observing and writing case studies that was quite intense so sometimes you've got this overlap where your modules overlap with something else and it can be a little bit sort of um, really just trying to get everything in its right box you can be thinking about so much so much so uh, a lot you know all at once yeah um, I think just having a system where you I have a filing system where I just put each module into a, a section and I can come back to it and revisit it um, yeah, you do have to schedule it in, and at times um, it, it is, it's, it's a lot of work, but um, a really lovely sense of when you've got to the end of a particular assignment, or got to a sense of module, and you've gained this kind of really <laughs> lovely understanding, and you've got this lovely feedback, and you think, oh yes, you know, it's very, very, very satisfying to know that you've really made a difference to, to yourself, to what to your knowledge and um, and to the way that you teach, and you know that that's going to be effective. So yeah, it's a lot of hard work. Don't undertake it lightly, but it's so worth it. So yeah. worth it. And I love what you're saying about the importance of scheduling in because it is important to schedule it. You know, the time that you will read, that you will work on assignments in the same way that we schedule in students, and actually where we have those physical slots mapped out. So, so sorry, my phone's going off, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh dear, I thought I'd turned it off, sorry. <laughs> That's what happens to me, so don't worry at all. <laughs> so let's kind of dig into what has, what would you say your favorite part of the course has been so far, and why? Goodness, um, I think I think because because the course goes above and beyond what's required for the syllabus. That um, you and Sally have set us these little projects um, where we're del delving into different aspects of piano teaching and, and different aspects of music, and. Um, we have been, um, the, myself and the other teachers on the course, we've been sharing little snippets about how we do things with our students. It, it could be um, intermediate repertoire, it could be beginner repertoire, it could be style and interpretation. But the way that the course is, is being constructed to um, 
help us kind of focus on these individual areas and give us little tasks to do and share those. I've really enjoyed doing that and I've really enjoyed watching my fellow students on the course um, and uh, watching what ideas they've got. So I don't care how long you've been doing something, you can always learn something new. And I think that's been really, really enjoyable. I think we've all got a lot out of that. Um, and I think it's nice to sometimes to learn from your peers as well as having your tutor sort of, so, you know, I think you, you learn in a different way, don't you, when, you, when you're peer learning. Um, um, and that's, yeah, it's been enjoyable and really useful. I think it's been a useful exercise to do yes. those little. Because of course, videos. this year for the very first, we had the Curious Live Days in London and it's a feature that we're obviously keeping um, for, you know, all the courses that we plan for the future. Tell me a little bit about that, because obviously you've just been saying about how great it is to have, you know, your peers, your fellow students on the course, getting that support online. But tell me just a little bit what it was like actually meeting up with everyone in London. And obviously that's what's we're going to be meeting up again next month, which we're really looking, looking yes. forward to. But what was that like? That was really good, because you, you, you're sort of a little bit on edge, aren't you? When you're sort of going and you don't you know, you're going to... But for me, who's a bit of a country girl, I'm going to London. I don't often go to London. It's a bit of an adventure. And, um, you know, and meet new people for the first time. But it was so nice. It really didn't take us very long. Um, you and Sally did that great icebreaker um, at the beginning. And we were singing and dancing and doing really crazy things in rhythm patterns. And it was just a lot of fun. And immediately, we all kind of clicked into, into place. Um, and we just had plenty of opportunity to chat with each other and get to know about each other's backgrounds. Um, and yeah, that, it, it, was really, it was really good, a really good experience. Um, I'm glad you're continuing to do that because I think that's really valuable to get together and to be able to talk things through. I know we can do that online. I just think it's so much better when you're physically together. Um, um, I learned a lot those couple of days and, and it was nice to, um, I think we were preparing on the first Curious Life to get ready for the case studies and because that's such a meaty module, that was again really beneficial to go through that step by step about how we were going to plan that and how we were going to take it forward. So, sure. yeah. I think actually our case study um, assignments this year really reflected that. I think everyone right. was really quite bang on the spot. Uh, right Good. at the beginning and I, th I think we're kind of putting it down to that anyway the fact that we had that day where everyone was together and we really got us stuck in and got everyone yeah. kind of it was like you know starting the race as it were together because yes it is a new module um, but again obviously a really worthwhile one because it's one where you're really exploring students and there's a lot of reflection as well yeah. um, just a few more questions just that one on reflection. Obviously, this course is, and you've already alluded to the fact that it's not just about following the syllabus. Mm. Sally and I have created this so that you get, it's kind of, it's teaching for life is what we mm. call it. So that you're getting um, to really deepen skills. And one of those being that skill of being able to be a reflective piano teacher. Mm. Mm. Tell me a little bit more about how becoming more reflective has impacted on, on your teaching. I, I think it was, really, it was really interesting right from the very first essay that you had us write about um, how we got to where we were, because I think that really, that, that really influences how we were taught as children, how we got to, to, how we got to, to teaching ourselves is really indicative of, of how we teach our new students. Certainly, certainly when you first start out, um, and I think you kind of just go with that, not necessarily thinking there's any other way to do it until there comes a point where you do, you know, eventually, realize, hang on, maybe I'm not doing that or I'm not doing that, I'm not doing the other. So, yeah, so now I do very much reflect. I'm very much more, after every lesson now, um, whereas I used to store things in my head, <laughs> I don't do so much that anymore. Possibly because the older I get, I can't remember things quite the same. But um, after every lesson, I have you know um, every student's profile, and I jot down a few things about what we did in the lesson. But not only what we did, but how it went, what worked, what didn't work, how I might do it differently next week. And of course, 
I think that's something that you learn as you go along as well, that different ways that you do things to approach things, different for every student. One thing that works really well and may have been working really well for you know years and years, suddenly you get a student and that doesn't work and then you have to think, okay, let me reflect back on that. What happened? Why didn't they get it the same way as other students? What can I do to change that? So yeah, definitely on a on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm much more reflective. Um, and that all started with just thinking, going right back, right way back to how it all started and the, the route that I took. Um, uh, and that and that's yeah, again, it's improving it's improving my teaching, it's improving my, my students' experiences because I feel more prepared then the next lesson to say well because I reflected really well on that I've come up with a plan for what to do next time so it's it's all very connected isn't it it is and planning I know we're not really gonna we haven't the time to, to flesh that out today no but I know planning is another very massive thing that we do on the course yeah. that I think unless piano teachers have previously trained as secondary or primary school teachers mm -hmm. Planning is something that we really don't have an awful lot of knowledge about. So yeah. it's something else that we really dig into in the course. Um, if you could change something about the course, what would it be? Oh, well, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I think probably, and I know this is probably not practical because there's so much to get through in the time that we've got. Um, I find it, I always find it difficult when I've got an overlap when I've got two, two or three things going on at once. And I guess that's quite difficult to, uh, to avoid because there is so much to cover. Yes, um, yes. But, but yeah, that, that's, that's tricky, just okay, getting well, everything those, balanced. Those overlapping modules. Yeah. Again, I think those time, time restraints and trying to fit yeah. things into the 15 month course and kind of giving teachers that whole rounded experience. But we're aware that we're kind of, I mean, going back to in terms of ours, if let's say there's someone listening to this and they're going, and how many hours a week are you actually doing? What, what would your kind of average answer be? That's well. Let me think. It's it's difficult because it will vary from week to week. So the, there was a nice there was a nice lull a couple of months ago <laughs> where I'm thinking, oh, I feel like I've just I could just have a rest this week. It was quite nice, but um, you know, certainly in, in when you've got a meeting module like the um, um, the case studies and the lesson observations. You're doing a couple of hours every day, really, during the week. And then other times you may be doing a couple of hours a week. It does depend on what it, what it is you're working on. And, and again, I suppose it depends how quick you are at certain aspects. I'm quite probably slow at getting my essays together. I've got all the ideas, but getting that down for me and learning to learning to reference for me was I'm, I'm not a degree educator so just that whole skill of learning to reference things that I've read and how to put that into my essays how to set my essays out so that, that they, they flowed that was a, a learning curve for me mm. so I suppose for somebody who's maybe degree educated they would find that quicker and easy to do so it probably took me longer for some aspects of that um and maybe i was quicker on, on other ones but yeah you you need to if, if you can give yourself i think an hour a day monday to friday i think initially um that's that's probably about right um in practical terms i know for me I don't always get an hour a day in. If I did, oh, sometimes I'll think, no, an hour's not enough. I need an afternoon or I just need a free day to get my head around to that because I'm, I'm not very good if I break off and come back to things. So I, it, it depends yeah, how yeah. you work, I think, doesn't it? You know? That's so true. And I think, yes, when you're in the middle of actually writing something, you yeah. know, writing up a case study, let's say, you do yeah. need to kind of have those half days set aside yeah. in yeah. a week. This is where you get into the zone because when you're... Yeah doing that kind of level of thinking to just come in and out you know for like an yeah. hour a day isn't quite enough it's it's yeah. better use of your time because you'd be kind of in and out for an hour for a long time and not probably not feeling like you're getting anywhere yeah. so it's it's kind of having those places marked out in your, yeah. in your diary just to know that okay i'm going to spend a couple of afternoons and really get get this get this written get this assignment submitted yeah yeah for sure 
You chose the guided study option, yeah. which means, so basically two options. You've got the, um, the self-study, which is basically you just get to, to access all the course materials. You went with guided study, which means that you get, um, you get a tutor. And obviously in that case, that was me, but then people mm -hmm. who did baby or SM get, um, get Sally as their tutor. Mm -hmm. What was that? Was, was that worth the extra, the extra money that's, that's involved there? Yes, ab absolutely. For me, it was. I think um, I think I wouldn't have had a clue if I was on the right tracks had I not had the feedback. And, and the feedback is was, the feedback you gave me was always so well constructed. A, it was always very positive and encouraging, you know. Um, but B, you were you were great at, at being specific about well this maybe needs to be looked at, or that needs to be looked at, but also really good at saying, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And so um, in, that, in that lovely kind of way, you maybe think, okay, okay, well, maybe no, I've not, or maybe I have, but I've only touched on it. And then you would be, um, give me pointers as to where to go research that further. So if I would not had that, yeah, my, my work wouldn't, wouldn't have been anywhere near what it is now I don't think so it's been really really valuable for me um, just to have that that validation that yep yeah, you're on the right tracks this this is okay um, but also there's this this and this you could think about this would even take you that step further um, so absolutely that's that's really been that's, worth it for me that's really good to know because I know that's what we aim for with you know yeah. with that particular option where people step by step along the course get that sense of validation or get that sense of this is where you're at yeah. and this is how you can develop this or as was often in your case it was you know you had put the work in and it was it was bang on Aww, <laughs> cool. <thank you. laughs> um, but you know it's it's great to know that they that the extra because i know that people do look and they they realize that it's quite a lot more investment wise and obviously that's just because you get our our one-to-one -one time yeah on. yeah but what, what's nice as well about that one-to-one because -one, um, you have your feedback on the materials that you submit but what was what's always really lovely is that I know if I'm really a, a, a crossroads or I'm stuck that at any point I can drop you an email or drop you, drop you a slack message and say Sharon I'm stuck with this can we have a quick Skype call or can you just give me some and always you come straight back to me or say right I can't get back to you now and I'll come back to you tomorrow or whatever and that's always really good to know because sometimes you just you hit a brick wall yes. and you think I need help to get over that. So it's not just the feedback that you give on the, on the, on the work that we submit, but the fact that you're always there if, if we need some guidance. So that, that's really good as well. Fabulous. So let's say we've got someone watching this video and they are just on that kind of tipping edge. Um, our early bird obviously expires um, on the 31st of July. What would you say to them? What's your kind of piece of advice for someone really thinking seriously about this, but just not so sure if they're going to take the plunge? Um, I would say if it's something that you, you really want to do, and for me it was, I mean, I really, really wanted to do this and have wanted to do it for such a long time. Um, just take the plunge, just take the plunge. I don't think you'll regret it. If you're prepared to put the work in, and it is a lot of work, there's no skirting around that. It's a lot of work, but for me where I am now, coming up to August, and the majority of the work is done or it's getting there, and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, it's only two or three months and I can do the exam and it'll, it'll all be done, and that's kind of my starting point, like I said, for well, well what next? But um, it's real. I feel really, really pleased and proud of what I feel I've achieved, my own personal achievements, over this, well, what's in September last year, um, because I've learned so, so much. And whether you go and take the diploma or not, that's entirely up to you. But the thing is, if you do this course and you do this work, you, you can't you can't fail but be a better teacher i think you know there's there's so much you can learn um no matter how long you've been doing or how little you've been doing even if you're a new teacher and there are a couple of newish teachers on our course this time and i think they've gained so much from from it as well um that that it, and 
I would say the guided study is fantastic. If you're not sure, go for the guided study because I think that's really, really beneficial. And, and if you're not sure, that will really help encourage and give you the confidence that you're on the right track. But yeah, just um, it, it's, it's been worthwhile. And I'm kind of excited now. I'm at the stage where at one point I was thinking, oh, this exam, this exam's coming up. But now I'm kind of feeling, I'm a bit excited to go and say, well, actually, no, this is what, I, this is what I've done. This, look at what I can do now. It's quite, you know. And I actually, I love what you have just said about it being hard work. Yes. Because anything that's really worthwhile yeah. does not come easily. No. And for those who are watching this video and hearing us talk about hard work, they will know what that means. Yeah. You can't just kind of, you know, skim across something and expect it somehow to magically all happen. It does take the hard work and it is something that we have, you know, Sally and I have put the hard work in and actually thinking and planning it so that it's not just a kind of, we're following the, the syllabus and yeah. we're actually we've created a curriculum for people to follow and so that that depth of understanding and learning is actually realized and it's like you say Anne it's when you do that and you're starting to see the results you're seeing the changes you know that you're reflecting so much better and seeing the fruits of of, of, of the labor as it were um it does definitely it makes you feel very good it makes you feel very proud it does. It does. I, I'm 100% a better teacher than I was 12 months ago, even with lots of experience under my belt, even with lots of mistakes made and, and learning by mistakes and not doing those things again. I'm still, still learning. And that's fantastic. It's funny, you know, it's like um, I have that quote, but yeah, it's a bit up on the notice board behind, but I, I pinned it up when I started the course. It says, um, Discipline is the ability to make yourself do something you don't want to do in order to achieve something that you really want to achieve. And I think that's for me, when I'm struggling, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, this is really hard. I look at that and think, no, come on, Anne, you know, this is where you're doing it. It's really hard work, but it's, it's something I really want. So you do and, you, and you, you plug away and you get there. And it is, it's very satisfying. It's definitely, definitely turned my teaching around the whole being a member of the Curious Penner Teachers and doing this course has really, yeah, really turned things around for me. I was at the point of thinking, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. I'd really got to that stage um, before I joined the Curious Penner Teachers and then having been, um, uh, you know, used to get, having access to those resources for a while and then finding out about the course, it really has. It turned my teaching around and suddenly I'm loving it again. I'm, I feel inspired. So, um, yeah, that's thanks to you guys. And, um, yeah, for anybody thinking about doing this course, yeah, I I'd highly recommend it. If you're prepared to put the work in, um, it's, it's worthwhile. It's worth doing. So exciting to hear that. Thank you so much, Anne. You're welcome. And I just want to say thank you for watching this video. And the other thing which I think is worth just saying at the very end is that you don't have to feel like you're the perfect teacher to come on this course. I think sometimes people put it off because they think I'm going to be, what, what are people going to think about me? And that was my experience a way back many years ago. <clears throat> and I pushed myself, I kind of, it was literally pushing myself off precipice and really wanting to get better, but feeling that if I got out in the kind of public realm of even another one or two piano teachers, what on earth would they think of me? But what I find getting out there was that actually I got the permission to actually go and get things wrong and figure it out and realize actually that doesn't work, but hey, let's try it this way. And I think that's really all what it's about. We at the Curious Piano Teachers are curious and that doesn't always mean that we have got the right answers, but hey, if we've got questions and then they will, you know, we will figure out answers to some of those. And of course, in doing that, we will, we will end up with more questions. None of us are the perfect teacher. That really doesn't exist. It's just about someone who through constant development does get better. And where we get to that point where we feel slightly less of an imposter, which I think we can all relate to, um, even now. 
there are things that I will do in my teaching and I will have teaching days where you kind of think, why am I doing this? But of course, then you realize, actually, no, I do have the tools in my toolbox. I know what to do and I can plan a lesson that's going to fix that for next week. So listen, Anne, thank you so, so much for coming on this call. You're welcome. And, um, we look forward to welcoming more new students onto our course next year. And all the very best, Anne, to you in your exam later this year, which I know you will totally rock. Thank you. <laughs> I said that with total confidence. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>